All right, so today is Monday the 26th of November, and today is a ridiculously important day in the astronomy community because NASA's InSight probe is going to be landing on Mars today around half seven UK time. So it launched back in May. Uh, it's been traveling to Mars for about six months, and today is the day that we will know if it's landed safely and be able to carry out its mission to investigate the interior of Mars. It's going to put what's called a seismometer uh, onto the surface and also a heat probe into the surface of Mars. And the idea is that we will be able to detect Mars quakes and understand the interior of another planet in our solar system, as well as Earth and also the Moon as well, to be able to better understand how the inner planets formed in the early solar system and how all the rocks clumped together to form what we know of as the Earth with its core, its mantle and its crust. And so we'll be trying to do the exact same thing with Mars today. So landing is happening around about half seven UK time and uh, this has been a project that has been contributed to by countries from across the world including US, Canada, Japan, countries across Europe including the UK and specifically uh, a team from Oxford Physics. So one of the perks of being Oxford Physics is that I get to go to a Mars landing party today and I'm going to take you guys with me and I'm going to vlog, try and see if I can interview some of the scientists that have been uh, working on the project and we'll see what a physics party is really like I guess. <laughs> We're slowly filling up in the lecture theatre here. People are getting very excited. We're hearing from Sue Horn, who's the head of space exploration at UK Space Agency. So that is going to be good. She's been involved in the InSight mission uh, from the beginning. So it's going to be great to hear from her about what we can expect tonight, what we can expect from the rest of the mission as well. So I'll try and catch a bit of on tape and we'll see where the evening takes us, shall we? Till then, look, check out the atmosphere in here. Get it, it's a planetary physics trip. <laughs> Got the countdown up. Ready and ready to go, look. Inside countdown, 1 hour 30 minutes and 40 seconds, 11,900 miles away. Very exciting. Oh, look who it is. It's Professor Chris Lindor. This is an exciting for me. I, my office is opposite him. But for you guys, you know, he's Oxford's his own celebrity. Good shape. And we've taken lots of panoramic images. We've built up a Mars yard from the JPL from Trace Warren, who's uh, one of the people who helped test and build the instrument. He's actually at JPL at the moment. And he says, everything is going good so far. <laughs> 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 Basically, we'll, we'll find out that Trace is pretty bad at this, otherwise we'll just keep holding it. The, 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 the one update I have from Sunday at JPL is that they, they were peanuts in the mission control. It's a very important JPL tradition that goes back to pre-Apollo, the peanuts guarantee success. <laughs> So the atmosphere is building in here. People are getting quite nervous. The uh, mission scientists are pacing at the front. <laughs> yeah, things are getting quite tense. The craft has separated as it was supposed to, and they've got a signal from it. And that was just confirmed five minutes from parachute deployment. Oh, it's clapping. Okay, so that's the CubeSats that are following the um, craft as it goes to the atmosphere, have locked on a signal from it. More clapping. Wow, JPL would really like to clap. No, oh, those guys are frowning. Whatever they're looking at, they're not happy. Uh, we may even see a uh, first picture from the surface of Mars. Very exciting. Should be a second picture. Three, two, one, zero. Mm. Mars. Okay, that's atmosphere entry. So in a few seconds. Of course, it's technically done that six and a half minutes ago, so. Very tense. Now. 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 Now.
and could cause a temporary dropout of telemetry. This could last for as long as two minutes. <laughs> don't panic when the signal drops because it gets too off falling through the Martian atmosphere because of friction. I mean, they don't look like they're in terror. Inside should now be experiencing the peak heating rate. Portions of the heat shield may reach nearly 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit as it protects the lander from the heating environment. <laughs> she is helping. She's adding to the terror. <laughs> Hey, Tom Hoffman. If there is path through peak deceleration, telemetry shows the spacecraft got about 8 G. It's now traveling at a velocity of 2,000 meters per second. Jeez, 2,000 meters a second. Six, six, over six max. <laughs> Okay, so we've heard from the spacecraft after it's gone to its hottest point and it's about to deploy its parachute so it'll be getting towards its top speed soon before it slows itself down. So big thing is parachute point. Green, I'm going to report the top changing doppler. Okay. Ooh. Okay, so that was that they checked, they detected a change in the Doppler shift of the signal coming from the spacecraft, which suggested that it's changed its speed, and therefore the parachute had deployed successfully. Hence the clapping. Mm. The Oxford scientist is getting nervous now. And this is sort of the last sort of five, ten years of their career that this is riding on, so. There's pacing. See, the next thing on the timeline is a uh, lander separation. Radar's locked on the ground. More clapping. Yay! Six hundred meters. Not far now. Four hundred meters. Three hundred meters. Always drop like a stone. 200 meters. 80 meters. 60 meters. Oof. It's lower than the size because usually it's fire. 37 meters. 30 meters. 20 meters. They have a uh, JPL as well, just giving them a text that says whoop. So we've landed. <laughs> we've landed. We have landed. That was um, every time. I think I know about science. The engineers are brilliant. This is going to work. And then every time I feel this in the pit of my stomach that I'm convinced it's not going to work. And I was standing next to uh, Neil and Anna, the two inside scientists we had here, and suddenly watched them go from being brilliant science communicators to bundles of nerves. And poor Anna, I don't think she could speak. And she suddenly realized she was in front of a lecture theater of 200 people. Um, dealing with this craft landing, and if that hadn't landed, I, I'm not utterly sure she has a job tomorrow or in the near future. And that, and that human thing is what rides on, the, on this. So I'm delighted that Insights on Mars. I love Mars robots. They are more or less my favourite kind of robot. Um, and and um, we're going to find out about the interior of Mars. It's a proper science mission. None of the biology nonsense that the others go on about. Not looking for water. Finding out whether Mars has a core. That's pretty cool. Yeah, Mars quake. 
quakes is possibly my new favorite word. Mars quakes, yes, Mars quakes. If you haven't heard the song, oh yes, should, the yeah, song. There is a it, viewer. There is an Oxford-produced Johnny Berlin and Mars quake song, which is rock, <laughs> and I think you will enjoy it. So go, go listen to Mars quakes. You heard him. You heard him. This is the first image that's come through. Wow. And there's still a, there's still a lens, very dusty. There's still a lens cap on the uh, on the camera. At this point, it's clear lens cap, but there's still there's still a plastic lens cap over that. So. Um, wow. wow. That's really cool. There's a rock. There's a rock. Yeah. That means you're really on Mars if there's a rock. <laughs> so tell us what we've got here. What this looks really cool. Okay, so in here we have got a, this is a real model, but it's a real version of the SP sensor, the short period sensor that we sent to Mars. So there are three of these on Mars. So this is etched out of a single sort of wafer. You just see on the side You can see it moving, lines. can't you? You can see it vibrating and you can see the springs. That, that's all out the same silicon wafer making those two bars act as the spring. Yeah, that's really cool. So that is exactly what is on the side of Melinda. So this is about Mars right now. Yeah, well, three. not that one, but... <laughs> there are three of these, exactly like this. So it's, yeah. it's inside the gold box. The gold box, box basically, cute. yeah, has the, um, the elect oh, there's some electronics in there, and then that connects into another electronic box on the lander. But yeah. basically, this, this is inside there. So I've been working on Mars missions for 19 years. Since I was on Beagle 2, I put a wind sensor on Beagle 2 as part of this weather station. That landed but never communicated. Or it, we never knew if it landed. So that was that was a nerve wracking moment. That was Christmas Day 2003, 15 years ago. Uh, but it was pretty clear that wasn't going to communicate by the time it hadn't communicated half an hour later. So there was that. And then there was Schiaparelli, the ExoMars lander, which I also had a wind sensor on. And that, I was in mission control for that. Uh, and watching the trace, watching the little peak with the radio signal, uh, and then that suddenly disappeared, and we knew that this was pretty bad at that point. So I was kept well clear of the podium today. <laughs> so uh, it was best, like, th you know, best of three, right? Like, this was the third one. Best of three. <laughs> well, this is definitely the best out of those three. Yeah, we've already got the image back, right? So we already know that it's landed. Uh, I haven't seen the image. Yeah, it came oh, through before. Turn oh, my God, that's an amazing I'm moment. I'm sure will show it again. Maybe yeah, it was quite dusty, yeah. but, you know, yeah. it was there. There was oh, an image. Dusty? So, yeah. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> so, yeah, so this in terms of like career, is this like a career high for you? It's good, it should be one of many. This is how we like missions to go in yeah. general, more success, less hit. Yeah, so I've been looking forward to this. This is actually the second, third maybe landing I've been to. And because Phoenix was, a, you know, had landed quite successfully and this is all created by, or this is this is based on the Phoenix landing. Yeah, it was like the same like kit basically, right? Like Absolutely. Proven kit. Yes, and we've used the supersonic parachutes before. Mm -hmm. So it's all things that have we've used before. So it was really great to just, I had, I had no doubts that it was going to be my own. So which other three landers have you been to? So uh, uh, Spirit and Opportunity. Uh, and that nice. was a long time ago. That was like 2000. <laughs> Where did you watch those? I was actually in Pasadena. <laughs> wow, that's really cool. But not at JPL. I was at the Planetary Society's event, which was huge. They had solar sails. Bill Nye was there. So many celebrities. So you met Bill Nye? Yeah, a long time ago. Oh, I'm so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> and what's so cool is Mars quakes. Hello. You know, we. I'm from California, so Earth Quakes are definitely a part of my growing up, but who would ever thought that we'd be able to find out if Mars is active and maybe has some sort of, you know, a bit more, maybe a dynamic, not as much as Earth, but, um, you know, some seismic activity would be really cool to find out. Yeah. Did you have fun? Yeah, it was really nerve-wracking when it landed. Yeah? Like six minutes. Six minutes? Wow. So were you, like, sort of biting your nails and, yeah. like, yeah, were you, like, clapping along with all the scientists yeah. in NASA as well? Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> really nice, it's like sitting in a room with everyone with the same interest that you have. So you're sharing an interest, and I think when everyone clapped when it landed, that was one of the most memorable moments of my life. Wow, <laughs> yeah, mine too. Yeah. And what was it like? Did you feel the tension? Yeah, like in the room. Oh my god, yes. Like, uh, I was like absolutely sure that it would land, but I don't know. Like seven minutes before the landing, I was so nervous. Yeah, and my hands were sweating. All over. Oh, please just land. <laughs> Especially because like the scientists themselves were like pacing, yeah, exactly. right? Like it really upped the ante in there, yeah. didn't it? They so. were really stressed, and that like pushed on to. Us as well. Yeah. Really Do you think 
that we we as humans will ever go to Mars. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah you're like yeah. fingers crossed again. <laughs> we will. We'll in the do next it. Twenty years. You're right. Yeah. That's it, guys. <laughs> you heard it here. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to Mars at some point. <laughs> we're gonna we make go it. Together. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Us two. Yeah. We're gonna make it to Mars. <laughs> See, how did you find that whole experience as sort um, of someone whose career was riding on that landing? <laughs> um, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. We had a lot of uh, a lot going on it. We've been working on it for a long time, one form or another. So to know the spacecraft is on the surface of Mars now and that bit is over is definitely good. Um, the next bit though is we've got to get it, we've got to turn it on, make sure it survived getting onto the surface because you know it's, we knew it worked on the way to Mars, now we've got to prove that it will definitely work when it la after landing because obviously that's quite a sudden event. Um, then, if we prove it works on the lander, the next thing to do is to get picked up and put onto the surface. So it's not over for us yet. In a few months' time, when we've mapped out the surface of Mars from the vicinity around the landing site, that's when we'll be picking up the instrument and placing it onto the surface, and then we place the windshield on top of it. Once we've done all that, then we can start waiting and listening for the Mars quakes, which Great. we want to hear, which will tell us about the internal structure of the planet. Brilliant, yeah. So, um, so when should sort of people be looking out for news from uh, Insight? Do you reckon? Um, so we'll get much better pictures because um, at the moment it's got a lens cap on the on the camera to protect it from the dust. So you may have seen a picture quite quickly after landing, which is yeah. amazing and really remarkable. But it looked a bit foggy. That's because there's still actually a lens cap on the camera. So now all the, once all the dust has settled down, the lens cap will come off and then there'll be better pictures of the landing site quite quickly. So that's the first thing you'll hear. The next thing will be in probably a couple of months' time when we are actually going to pick up the instruments and put them onto the surface and see how it's all going. Brilliant. And that's the next bit. Great. So we're all clapping because we're all relieved everything's yeah. happened and we're like, woo, it's done, but this is when the hard work starts for you guys, yeah, right? Yeah, very much so. So yeah. there's a lot. I, the reason I was talking tonight is because a large number of other people from the UK team are actually in Pasadena right now at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory getting ready to go in and do their first full day of Mars surface operations tomorrow morning. Oh. So I don't know whether you drew the short straw or the long straw there. Teaching. <laughs> oh, definitely the short yeah, straw. Teaching. So I'm, I'm heading off um, now. I'm now definitely going um, on Saturday. Great. So I'll be heading out to JPL to catch up with everybody and see what the next steps are. Brilliant. Well, safe flight and we'll look forward to hearing more in the future. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, bloody hell, that was tense, wasn't it? Jeez. I'm so glad it's over. Like, everything is down safe and now they can actually start, like, deploying all of the instruments that hopefully have survived. Like, that descent was ridiculous. You know, it slowed down from, like, 12,000 miles an hour at the top of the atmosphere to, like, five by the time it landed at zero meters. Like, I worked it out that, you know, like, when people say, like, cars are, like, naught to 60 in so many seconds. Like, it's, it was an equivalent, like, deceleration of, like, naught to 60 in 0.9 seconds like it was ridiculous how quickly it had to decelerate so it's amazing if all of the kit has survived and it's amazing for the team it was great to be in the room and then when they were so tense and like pacing around so I'm really looking forward to seeing what science comes out of this mission and hearing all about Mars quakes which is definitely my new favorite word um, but until then we're now all off to the pub so I will see you guys next week Dr. B over and out